Do you like electronic torque wrenches? Or do you like Snap-on? Maybe you like both. Let's check this thing out in just a moment. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. This is the Snap-on Tech Angle 300 foot-pound torque wrench. Specifically, it's the ATEC uh, something 300. Anyway, we'll have the model number in here so you can see that. Uh, anyway, maybe on your smaller torque wrenches. So this will absolutely suffice at 80 teeth with that four and a half degree swing arc. Very nice design here. We'll dig into it and take a closer look at this here in a moment. But really and truly, is this something that you need? Is this something that you want? Have you already stepped into the digital world or the electronic torque wrench world? I will tell you they're very handy, especially when you're doing torque to yield fasteners. And you can do not only your foot pounds, but also uh, your angle or uh, your torque to yield, yield bolts uh, like most of your manufacturers have gone to. If not all of them, uh, you have all the sensations in here. You have the feel of the vibration. You have the uh, LED lights shining as well as you get the audible beep in this. But let's quit talking. Let's dive in. Take a closer look at the Snap-on Tech Angle. And then we'll come back and talk about pricing and that sort of thing after we use it a bit. This is the Snap-on Tech Angle digital or electronic torque wrench. Uh, really nice torque wrench. Been around a couple of years now, but we haven't had a chance to review it yet. Uh, this is the 300 foot-pound version, so it goes from 15 foot-pounds up to 300 foot-pounds. Uh, they call this the Tech Angle. Many call it the ATEC because the model number actually says uh, ATEC. Uh, let see if we can see this here. ATEC 3F300MB. Uh, so that's the model number of this. So again, many people call it the, the ATEC or the Tech Angle. Uh, you have a flexible head here, I believe, up to like five degrees, so it doesn't mess with your actual um, uh, calibration of your torquing. You get an 82 that uh, very easy to read and easy to find uh, directional lever. Again, typically you're not dealing with a lot of space confinements when it comes to using a 300 foot-pound torque wrench. Um, so nice looking head. Uh, obviously very solid through the body as well. We'll be using this in here in one moment as well, uh, but just a very sturdy feeling and looking torque wrench right out of the gate. It comes with obviously our manual, which is pretty thick. It's got a lot of uh, info in it. And the thing that makes this thing worth anything, and in fact, it's not worth anything without it, uh, and that's your calibration card. Make sure anytime you get a torque wrench, if it does not come with a calibration card, then it's worthless. In fact, it's probably worse than worthless. It could cost you a lot of money if you uh, try to torque something and you go from righty tighty to righty loosey. That's not a good thing. Um, so anyway, here's our torque calibration card. Uh, pretty typical clockwise torque tolerance is plus or minus 2%. And uh, counterclockwise torque tolerance is plus or minus 3%. So we're well within that, and it gives us all the readings of, of when they were doing their testing at 60 foot-pounds, 180, and 300 foot-pounds. Gives us the name. Uh, all of that information is right here on the calibration card. And by the way, you should also have it calibrated about once a year. Uh, if you use it more uh, than most, and maybe even twice a year, and typically the snap-on truck should be able to help you out with that. So. Just a couple of items that come there with the package. Very important stuff. You can obviously read those directions if you want to. Don't eat the silica packets. They just don't taste as good as people say they do. Anyway, we always keep that in there as well. Good to keep the moisture out, especially here in Florida. So we've got three batteries here. It runs on three triple A's. Let's turn this around here. We can see it. Nice brass contacts here. So even brass in the tube, as well as brass on the handle. So should have some longevity there. And push that in and the torque wrench comes to life as it feels the power. Okay, let's move our case out of the way and let's talk about the torque wrench for a few minutes. As for the display, uh, pretty easy to read. Uh, very, you know, it's just a monotone. We don't have any color or anything. Uh, we do have a backlit display. Uh, we can turn that on and off just by the little light bulb button right here on this button and be able to see that backlighting or no backlighting. So if you're in a situation where you need a little bit of backlighting, you can turn that on. If not, it's not going to show that. And then cycling through everything, we have an enter button. Uh, we have an up down arrow button. We have a power button. 
We have a units button, and then as we mentioned, the, uh, the light bulb button as well, the backlighting button. Uh, these lights right along here, these LEDs, will, will display as we torque things, and we'll go from, uh, from yellow to green and then to red if we surpass our, our uh, torque or our angle. Um, so pretty typical, as well as you'll feel some uh, vibration and an audible beep as we heard it when it turned on as well. We can set presets on this. I'm not going to go through every single menu item, but we can set presets. So if you're, you know, all the time torquing, you know, whether it be lug nuts or head bolts on, you know, Chevrolet or head bolts on a Ford or Audi, what have you, you can set your different presets so that you're not having to go back and forth to that all the time. Now, just to show you here, if I go to units, I can go from foot pounds to inch pounds to Newton meters and then to kilogram meters as well. If I hit my enter button, it'll say angle zero required, torquing, torque zeroing, and basically it's telling you to keep the, uh, the torque wrench still and it should be switching over to the, uh, to the angle mode for torque to yield. Here, let me set it down. Doesn't like me holding it. There we go. So now we're at the angle mode and it says 80 degrees. Now, again, I can use my arrows and if you hold it down, it goes fast. If you just press it once, obviously it's just gonna go one degree at a time. Same thing with the foot pounds. If I hold it down, you'll see it'll start jumping 10 at a time. So once you hold it down for a few seconds, I can cycle through a little faster, but it does hold on each number, which I do like that. It doesn't seem to go too rapidly. It goes rapid on the ones, and then it starts slowing down as it goes to tens. So if I needed 200 foot pounds, there we go. Go back to my enter button here. So I'm set at 68 degrees and or uh, the 200 foot pounds. Now here's a cool thing. So right now it's either or. I can use the 200 foot pounds and then cycle over to the, uh, to the degrees and use the degrees or the angle. Uh, but I can also, if I go in, make sure you're not getting a glare here. If I go into the menu, I can hold down the enter button. If I hold down the enter button, this is where we can get into the menu and I can do things like, uh, it says set head length. So like set head length would be if we were using a crow's foot and it stuck out another inch, then obviously that's going to affect our torque or even our uh, yield as to what we're inputting. So you can add that to the head length and the snap-on torque wrench will actually take that into account as it's setting the torque. So you can set head length, uh, we can go into show data, so that's a lot to do with uh, just the, uh, I can clear data, so uh, basically if we're doing um, uh, sets where we're doing say 10 head bolts and we wanna track all that, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, cycle count, so again, as we're doing those head bolts, it can cycle through once it knows, hey, we've reached 90 foot pounds, and then it goes back to number two, and then number three, and so forth. Uh, language, obviously we can set, we're set to English, and then I can go into settings or configure. Now I'm going to go into configure, and hit enter here, and then it says mode setup. So I'm going to go into mode setup, and it says then disabled. Not really a lot of information, but if you read into that, basically it's kind of an if-then statement. So you can set this up to where, let's say you're doing main caps on, a, uh, on an LS motor and you've got to go 15 foot-pounds, and then you go 80 degrees. So 15, then 80. 15 foot-pounds, then 80 degrees. So we can go in and say, rather than then disabled, we can say, you know what? Hit enter, go to enable, and we're going to enable the then, okay? And now I'm gonna exit out of here. And so now, let's, take this down to 15 foot-pounds, because that's actually what we're gonna do, is we're going to uh, torque the main caps on an LS motor, cast iron LS. So 15 foot-pounds, and then we're gonna set the degrees at 80 degrees. So now, once we finish the, so you see it's set to torque of 15 foot-pounds, and then angle of 80 degrees. So pretty cool, so you can do things, rather than just using it as a torque wrench or using it as an angle, uh, you can actually set it up to where it's kind of smart enough to know that. 
And the cool thing about this is you don't have to do torque, then angle, torque, then angle, torque, then angle. You can actually do torque, 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 then angle, 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 angle. So that was one thing I was curious about because on the LS you're supposed to do all the torque, then come back and do all the angles. So let's go over and see how this works. So the first thing I'm going to do on these main caps, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of run these down. Uh, the insides go to 15 foot-pounds, the outsides go to 15 foot-pounds, and then the insides go to 80 degrees, and the outsides uh, go to, I believe, 51 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and run these down. I know everybody's having a hemorrhage right now that I'm running these down with an impact, but I've got it set on my auto mode, so it's just going to stop as soon as it senses something. I'll prove that to you in just a moment that we're nowhere near our 15 foot-pounds. So I'm going to put my socket on, 13 millimeter on these insides. As I mentioned, this goes to the insides go to 15 foot-pounds, then to 80, and then you torque the outside caps, and then you finally go to the uh, mains out, the, uh, uh, the back here for the webbing. Anyway, we're not going to worry about this. This is not final assembly at all. This is just mocking up to show this torque wrench. Uh, we're going to Turn our torque wrench back on here. It went off. There we go. So we're at 15 foot pounds. And let's see how this works. We'll start with our center. And I thought this was pretty cool because I've got my toolbox here. Kind of acts almost like a as a fender of a car if we we're doing a, a you know a cylinder head, something like that, where this angle comes into effect and lets us kind of circumvent having to pull this block away. I can still get up here with a little bit of angle and still be able to get a decent reading. And you see right away, I'm at 16 foot-pounds, and the green light's coming on here. Come back at it. There we go. We're getting the audible beep. We're getting the vibration, as well as our, our LED lighting right here. And I can move fast. So again, 15.5. 15.5, so it looks like if I stay within about 10%, it stays green, but as soon as I go past that 10% is when it goes red. So yeah, you see I went to 19 foot-pounds, I've got an orange and red LEDs here, letting me know I've gone too far. Okay, so now I've set all these to 15 foot-pounds. So now we're just gonna go to hit our enter button, now we're at 80 degrees, so now We've set all these at 15 and now we can come back and then it's going to track our angle. So here's the really cool thing with a torque wrench like this one. So I'm gonna come in and let's say we're under the hood. I'm at now 36 degrees, 48 degrees, 50, but let's say I'm hitting somewhere and I need to get a better bite. No problem, I can come back and it's gonna continue on 75, 80, there's my 80 degrees. So I don't have to do one continuous motion. 60 degrees, come back, 82 degrees. It also tells me 62 foot-pounds. So not only did I go 82 degrees, it's also knowing that's how much force. But you can see it's staying on the angle, 49, come back and get it. And by the way, when you're doing angle, and this is really on any torque wrench with angle, uh, you want to have a nice, smooth, not too fast of a motion. Again, we're getting the audible beep. We're getting the signal on our LED. We're at 71 too. And now we're getting the green light as well as the vibration in the handle. Very solid torque wrench, by the way. Sneaking up on it, 65, 68. And then let's get these last ones. 42. 81. And 81. 
If you've followed our channel for very long and you've watched our impact wrench shootouts or our impact wrench reviews, uh, even power tool reviews, then you may have seen that we can be kind of hard on Snap-on. That's really not true. Uh, all we look at is what are you paying? What is the value you're getting for a tool? And a lot of times on the impact wrenches and some other power tools, uh, they've lacked to step up to the game for the amount of money that you're putting into it. However, when it comes to hand tools with Snap-on, and I guess you could call this a power tool as well, since it does have batteries, Snap-on really sets the bar. I mean, they do a great job. Again, you're gonna pay the money for it, but we're not gonna be harsh on them when you're actually setting a standard like with this torque wrench. This is probably the best torque wrench that we've used, the best electronic torque wrench. Um, and it should be so. I mean, this is gonna set you back a little over 600 bucks, depending on you know, which variation you get and depending on what kind of deal you can get on the Snap-on truck. So this is not a cheap tool. Can you get torque wrenches for 200 bucks? Sure. Can you get decent ones for two or $300 in the electronic realm? Yeah, you can. Uh, at the same time, this has probably got the best feel, uh, the best features of any of them that we've reviewed. So should you buy this? Well, that's up to you. If you know, you're entering the game and you know, you're squeaking by paying a hundred bucks here and there, then you probably shouldn't buy this yet. However, if you're deep in your game and, and you're confident and you want this torque wrench, by all means, if we think it, it's worth the dough if you want something that's premium like this. So, hey, check it out from Snap-on. It really is a great torque wrench. Um, and uh, I, again, you know, you're gonna pay that, that 600 plus dollars for it. As far as warranty, I think it has a one year warranty on it. Uh, the nice thing about the Snap-on though is they're gonna be able to replace parts as things fail on it. Uh, or if they fail. And by the way, make sure you get your calibration card with your torque wrench. Your torque wrench is worthless without a calibration card. And another thing, make sure you get it calibrated once a year as well. Hey, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, feel free to give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.